Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another edition of the Spurs Chat Podcast. Spurs are back to winning ways. Tottenham Hotspur 3, Brentford 2. I'm live here from the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. So glad that we are now back into the top four. Spurs now have 43 points from 22 matches, eight points away from league leaders Liverpool, just three points away from champions Manchester City and rivals Arsenal. Now, as I said, Tottenham Hotspur 3, Brentford 2. Malpay... Uh, Put Brentford 1-0 up after 15 minutes. You doggy after 48 minutes. Johnson after 49 minutes. Richarlison after 56. And Ivan Tony getting a second for Brentford after 67 minutes. Now, the match stats today. Tottenham Hotspur had 68% of the ball to Brentford's 32%. Shots 19. Brentford 9. Shots on target. Spurs had 5 to Brentford's 5. Corners. Spurs had 5 to Brentford's 3. Fouls. 13 Spurs. 15 Brentford. As per usual, I've got three very special guests to talk about tonight's win. We've got channel regular Craig Dearman back with us. Craig, how are you? I'm all right. This club are going to give me heart attack one day, I swear to God. We never do anything easy, do we? My God, honestly. Um, mental, mental game. Uh, game of two halves. Yeah, looking forward to discussing this one because there is a lot to dissect, isn't there? It's, it, it was a mental, mental game. Also back with us is Channel Regular and Spurs YouTuber, Holly Agombar. Holly, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. Kind of on the same wavelength as Craig. I don't know, I lasted the last 10 minutes, or even the last 20 minutes, to say the least. But we got there in the end at Spurs for you, and it? we wouldn't have it any other way. But it's great to be back here uh, tonight to dissect everything. So thank you. Well, great to have you here. And great also to have Channel Regular and good friend Darren Altman back with us. Impressionist. Darren, how are you? Oh, yeah, just just the old tickers going. I tell you what, I've uh, it's doing my watch stats the world of good. You know my heart rate monitor; it's fantastic. It's going through the roof. Wow, what an ending to the game, though. My goodness, wow. Yes, we never seem to do things easy, but as I said, we're back in the top four, which is great to see uh, us back in the top four in the Premier League table. Craig, let's start with you. Actually, before we do. Just to say to the viewers and listeners, we are live on YouTube, on X and Facebook. So please do get involved. Give us your thoughts on tonight's game. Of course, Tottenham Hotspur 3, Brentford 2. Craig, let's come to you. Let's get your thoughts on tonight's win. As I said, it was a game of two halves. That first half was bloody awful, I thought. Um, no idea um, how he was going to get through them. It was, it was just filled with bad passes. Bad decisions in the final third, players not being strong enough. Um, and then the second half, like I say, the changes made at half time, I think, were key. Slight change in formation, and it reaches rewards. Um that it that that first half was um probably one of the worst halves of football I've seen us play this season. Um I don't think we've been right since Sonny left. I said I tweeted that earlier. Um just that something different up front somebody gives us our captain um and where, whereas uh, it was a poor performance against the whole of uh, in the whole of the game against city i thought tonight definitely that second 45 although we nearly tried we did our best to throw it away um we just held on at the end so um so yeah look another win um we're getting players back now stars on his way back um obviously Bissouma and son still away but um a win's a win at this stage, um, and with, with the injuries we've had, with players coming back from from injury, depleted squad to some degree, um, I'll just take anything at the moment. But it's good to see that the performances are in there somewhere. Uh, it's just we've got to learn to do that over 90 minutes and stop giving all the fans a heart attack. Mm. Craig, can I just pick you up on what you said there about missing Hunmin Son? Isn't it about, and I don't want to keep repeating myself, but isn't it about players coming in, taking chances, taking opportunities? It should be, yeah. Um, I mean, losing your captain, Sonny's a big character. Um, <clears throat> it, it's it's never going to be easy. But, you know, as you say, the professionals, some, they've got to stand up and, and do his job and do his work for him. just goes to show Sonny's a clinical finisher most of the time. Um, and I think that's what we miss, that, that clinicalness, if that's even a word. Um, but you're right, players do need to stand up. And look, tonight, Richarlison, I didn't, Again, I, I thought that I, we'll get into it. There was parts of his game that frustrate the hell out of me, but he got his goal, and it actually turned out to be the winning goal in the end. So that we scored three goals. I just prefer we we tried to keep them out the other end. But again, both goals came from 
mistakes, didn't they, by by your doggy, actually, sadly. So, um, and he had a mixed game, didn't he? I mean, gave away two goals and, and then what you did for, for for our goals in the second half. So, there's a lot to get into. But as, going back to your original point, Chris, yeah, players have got to stand up and, and, and carry the workload that Son does. I know we're going to get into the goals, but when Spurs went 2-1 up, I love the Spurs fans singing, Ivan Tony, you should have cashed out. Absolutely brilliant, brilliant in the side brilliant. stadium. Um, Holly, let's come to you and let's get your thoughts on this evening's game. I think it's I pretty much echo what Craig kind of says in terms of the first half was pretty rough. And you're thinking, my words, we've got Mathers back. The, the person we thought had the key is going to be able to unlock something and we're still waiting for something to happen. And I think it's kind of what we've seen recently without Sonny. It's the fact that everybody seems to want to walk it into the net and we seem so narrow when we want to do that. And it was just everybody was standing so static. There was no overlapping runs. There was no one coming inside and then going out. Um, and it was really frustrating. And then, I don't know what Anne said at half time, but the words of wisdom really shone through. And I think maybe putting Decky through the middle and then obviously having Johnson on kind of elevated us a little bit more. It gave us a little bit more energy, which we saw in obviously those first seven minutes. Um, so, yeah, I think it it, it was, uh, and it's, it's a telltale thing to just keep saying, but it was really this game of two different halves. Um, and I'm just glad that we can sit here and say we've got three points because I think I'd be very frustrated if we come out of that game 3-3. Three, three. Um, I think we'd all be very annoyed. But, yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy with it. A win's a win. Um, and we needed a bounce back, um, obviously, after Friday. So I'll take it. James Madison on Neil Mope copying his celebration. He's not scored enough goals of his own to have his own celebration, so he copied mine. Darren, <laughs> let's come to you. Let's get your thoughts on this evening's game. Uh, the first half, two words, monkey nuts. <laughs> um, yeah, it was frustrating, wasn't it? Um, as Holly and um, a good, Craig, Craig, good friend Craig said, um, yeah, not not really a lot going on. No width. You know, some of the best Spurs team we're used to seeing have got the um, uh, the wingers bombing forward, creating havoc. You know, think of all the great teams in the past, the great uh, right wingers, left wingers, balls in the box. Everything was trying to, um, well, as Glenn Hoddle said on commentary, you know, he's trying to, you know, thread the eye of a needle, as I say. <laughs> Uh, you know, you know, he's got to have some width about him. Uh, you know, as, as, as I say, and uh, um, and um, yeah, that that substitute of the um, the second half uh, was was great. You know, we came out. We always start really, really fast, flatter to deceive, and then nothing happens. Then the opposition comes and um, takes control of the game, and then we have a bit of a resurgence. And the same thing happened tonight. We came out like shit through a goose. Um, flattered to deceive, and, um, and and not a lot happened. So, um, yeah, thank God. You know, we uh, God knows what he said to them at the um, at the interval. Sorry, sorry, guys. <laughs> That's really tickled me. I've never heard that. Before. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah, God knows what he said to them at half time, but um, we absolutely uh, tore them a new one. Uh, what was it? Three goals in seven seven and a half minutes. Fantastic. And Poster Coglu has just confirmed, by the way, that James Madison is fine. He's only cramp, if anyone's wondering oh. about an injury update for him. Um, Craig, let's come to um, the starting 11 this evening, because, of course, James Madison was back in the starting 11. He hadn't started a game since that Chelsea game on the 6th of November. So, starting a game for over two months. Um, Vicario, Poro, Romero, Van der Ven, Udoggi, Skip, Benton Kerr, Madison, Kulisevsky, Werner, Richarlison, and subs this evening, Forster, Donnelly, Johnson, Dragusin, Hoybier, uh, Emerson, Brian Hill, and Ben Davis. Uh, of course, two changes from the Manchester City game. Any surprises there for you? Is that Tottenham's best starting eleven uh, at this current time? When I saw it come out, I wasn't displeased. Um, the only one for me that I wasn't 100% sure on, and he's not everybody's cup of tea, but um, Hoybier for Skip for me. Um, the rest was pretty much as I'd have expected. And when I say that, I think I might be in the minority here, but I thought Pierre-Emil Hoiberg in the second half was absolutely fantastic. Um, had a hand in, in at least two of the goals I can think of. And he just blocked things, slowed, slowed things down when needed to, did his job, dustman job, if you like. Needed a bit of a wind-up merchant on there, in my opinion, to deal with Malpay, who, who had a quieter second half. Um, but but 
apart from that, I thought it was pretty much, I was quite excited to see Mickey van der Ven, Bentoncourt and uh, Madison on the pitch at the same time for the first time. Uh, and of course, it just didn't quite work today in that first half for whatever reason. Um, but the, other than Brennan Johnson, I thought it, he, he probably it was time to um, give him a rest and um, put Kulu back on the right. Um, Werner gets a bit of stick and in that first half, his crossing wasn't particularly good. But I thought, again, second half, Werner was was absolutely awesome and doing what I've, I'd love to see him doing, that's running at speed, um, yeah. running at the players with speed. So um, going back to the starting eleven. Pretty much as I'd expected, Chris, as I say, apart from uh, the Skip and Hoi beer thing, but that kind of worked out in the end. Craig, who would you who would you give man of the match to today? I personally, uh, it's probably between, I thought Mickey van der Ven was superb again. Um, Richarlison, I'm reluctant to give it to because there, there's so many parts of his game, like I say, frustrate me. The ball just bounces off him sometimes, you think. When that ball goes up to him, I'm so used to seeing Harry Kane in that position. I'm sorry to mention Harry's name again. We seem to mention it every time. But, you know, hey, he did play for the club for a little while and he was a pretty good player. When you look at that, I see oh, Harry Kane would have kept that under control. He would have held on to the ball one or something. And that's what Richarlison has got to do a bit better. Mm. For, for me, like I say, it's difficult to give it to Hoybier for me because he was only on half a game. So for me, I, I, I would have to say Van der Ven. But um, Hoybier, I thought, like I say, was outstanding second half. He did give the ball away a couple. Sorry to pick you up on this, because you know what I'm like when I'm on this show. I make notes. And um, he did, I do honestly, <laughs> I'm, 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 it's, it's like my homework. It's like cramming for your GCSEs. He did give the ball um, away a couple of times, though, like needlessly, Hoyberg, quite early on, before he, he, yeah. got, he got stuck in. And I just thought, oh, come on now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I get that. Overall, though, I think, I, I thought he was brilliant today, Hoybier. And then in that position, you're gonna, you can't be perfect. But I get what you're saying, Darren. Yeah, he, he did. But I think he, what he did good far outweighed what he did bad. In my okay. opinion, I think we, I think a lot of us have said this on this podcast so far this season. Every single time that Hoybier has been called upon, he has done a very professional job. I know there's been mm. a lot of speculation about him leaving. I know he's not going to be leaving in this January transfer window now, so he'll probably leave in the summer. Um, but now we know that Darren's written notes. Um, if all the viewers can send in quiz questions for Darren about tonight's game, he'll answer them right at the end. Um, Holly, let's come to you. Um, on the starting 11, um, great to see James Madison back. Um, I know you said about um, being that lock picker uh, and it didn't quite happen in the first half, but what did you make of Madison's performance this evening? It's just beautiful. I mean, he's just amazing to watch. It's when he does his turns and he absolutely sends players the other ways or his tight control. And I'm thinking, my word, if we had a few of him on the pitch, I mean, we'd be on another different level. But for me, it's just great to see him back. And the thing is, I always forget as well that I know we've already said his name, Sonny, but we haven't had him back for a little while. So when those two are back together, those little passes will come off. And it was just a breath of fresh air to think, rather than the ball going out. I know it did a lot the first half, but at times the ball was zipped in and that was because Madders had that vision to play that ball through. So, yeah, it's, it's amazing to have him in. And I think for me, the first half, it was just so annoying to have that kind of midfield, obviously, with Bentencourt and Skippy. It's like, I know they've got more in them. And I think it was a great, obviously, I know everybody said it, it was a great tactical change from um, Ange to see that it wasn't quite working out quite well. And then to obviously bring those players on and then bring a fresh legs on, I think, did really change the game. So, yeah, back to your point, obviously, about Madison. I think we're just in a great position to finally have him fit again. And I, I just hope, and I know, like you said, that he, he's all fine. He's all good after going on the floor. And I just hope that we can keep him fit to the end of the season because he is really, he's the he's the magic on the, on, on the grass, isn't he, really? Well, Holly, let me ask you about Dian Kulisewski this evening and uh, particularly in the last couple of months with uh, the amount of injuries that we've had. What do you think his best position is in a Spurs shirt? That's a very, very good question. And I know lots of people have mixed feelings on him and the fact that he's not the player he was when he first joined. He's not this, he's not that. But I think for me, the fact he's, he can be versatile, the fact we could play him out the wing or we can play him down the middle if the midfield three isn't quite working the way we want it to. So I, I don't really know to be really sat on the fence. Um I think it just depends what the squad need. And I think that's the real vibe that I get from Spurs at the moment. Every player's are called upon 
when they needed to play in a certain position. Um, again, like going back to Hoiberg in terms of Hoiberg winds me up, but so does Skip. But I know if Hoiberg comes on later in the game and he's told that he's got a job to do, he'll go out there and do it at his best shift. And I think that's kind of the same kind of level as Decky. At times you see Decky always want to cut in and you feel like that's predictable. But then if he's already in the middle, he's got to try and think of something else. And that's when we sometimes see him dealt out wide and then pass the ball in. So I don't know <laughs> not to answer your question really badly, but... It depends where Ange wants him in that system, I think. Darren, let's come to you on the on the starting eleven, and particularly I wanted to ask you about Timo Werner. What have you made of the uh, of the signing, of course, from RB Leipzig on an initial loan? And, of course, we've got an option to buy him in the summer. What have you made of his appearances in the Spurs shirt so far, and what did you make of him tonight? Um, I thought the second half was probably his best performance um, for us. Um, I thought in the first half... Um, he was doing well up to a point. I think there was two, there was a few, maybe three or four crosses that just didn't do anything, uh, that didn't beat his man. Um, he's obviously got pace, he's tenacious, and I think he really showed um, what he's made of in the second half, particularly. And I hope for him, um, he really takes comfort in that. Uh, and I think it's um, it was immense. I think he set up two of the goals. Uh, he drove into the box, which was great to see. Um, hopefully his uh, crossing will get better, but he's definitely an asset for the team. Absolutely, um, yeah, he was he was great. And Foster Cogler has just been asked about deadline day and about transfers, and he said, "I said signings uh, were unlikely yesterday, and they're even less likely today. Of course, the transfer window is open for another twenty four hours, but." We don't expect anything to happen in terms of incomings, outgoings, perhaps, but not incomings. Mm. Um, Craig, let's uh, let's. Oh, sorry, Darren, who would be your man of the match? Um, Glenn Hoddle gave it to um, Richarlison. I would have said um, either Werner or Madison. I thought Madison in the um, hey, big boy, look at me. Yes, the uh, way that James threads the ball, fuck off. Um, so <laughs> let's, let's, let's just get that over, over and done with. Um, so I, there goes I, the monetization. Sorry, Chris. <laughs> I, I owe you a drink. Um, so apologies um, about the bad language. Sorry. Yeah. Thank you very much. Very professional. Um, look at that. Beautiful. Um, I thought the way he threaded some of the balls were fantastic tonight. You know when Kane used to do that telepathic thing where he would just turn a whip a ball to Sonny, you know, almost like a no-look pass. He's got that in him. And there were a couple of times, as Holly said today, where he just turns in a tight space and loses the man and threads a beautiful ball. Um, so for me, um, I thought Madison was my man of the match. I thought he was watching him play was beautiful. Beautiful. Before we get on to the match instance, does anyone want to come in and give me their thoughts on Neil Mope? Huh. I think I think he's... Um... Look, it's easy to hate on players that of other teams that wind you up. But if somebody in your team does it, like Romero, I reckon a lot of supporters of other teams hate people like Romero and Hoybier and people wind up merchants. It's just part of the game. And they all seem to be taken in in, um, in good uh, good laugh at the end. And obviously, mm -hmm. Madison's had a bit of banter with him. Look, if you're asking me, of course I'm going to sit here and think he's a bit of a tit. But if he plays for your team, you're going to love him, aren't you? You know, and that's what's, that, that is what football is about. Mm. Mm. I find him a little rat that can't play uh, darts, clearly. So. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what, he was very, very disappointed at the end walking down that tunnel. If you if you didn't see it, um, go and watch the video that I've just posted. It's, uh, it's classic. Uh, very, very disappointed uh, at the end. Um, Craig, Brilliant. let's come to you. After four minutes, Kulisevsky to skip. Uh, it was a good ball. Shot was blocked. Um, a couple of minutes later, Kulisevsky... Uh, it seemed that was running clear through. Uh, he got caught and tackled. Um, should he have done better there? Yeah, I think, in fact, I'd go as far as say Kulishevsky could have done better in the whole of the first half. I just don't think he really brought much to the table. He had a very quiet first half, getting quite frustrated with his performance in the first half. Um, just seemed to be lost. We seemed to be continually uh, trying to go through the middle with no width. I think, as Holly, uh, Holly said, it, it, it was really frustrating and Werner just not being out of cross with his left foot at all. Um, and then, like, like I said, it kind of came together in the second half just with a tweak of that formation and putting Kulu in the middle. So um, it obviously just wasn't working for him on the wing in that first half. But 
you know, you, you can't moan he's had more good games than bad games for Tottenham, but he was quiet. When he has a quiet game, I think you notice it more because you know what he's capable of and you want him to do that every game. And, of course, it's not going to be like that every game. No player is 10 out of 10 every game. So, as so I will let him off that one. I thought he was a lot better second half. Hmm. Ollie, let's come to you. Brentford had the ball in the net after 12 minutes. Uh, a very good move from, from the visitors. Uh, it went to VAR. I thought it was pretty obvious that it was offside, but it went to VAR. How close was it? Honestly, I think I saw it in real time. I was like, he's off. Like, there's no way he's... he's. Um, the fact they went to VAR and I was sat here thinking, here we go again. Let's spend 10 years to watch a decision that we all know at home and we all know in the ground at the time that he's 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 off. Like, he's off. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. It was a strange one, um, but it was definitely early warning signs. Like we've all kind of said, we weren't really with it in the first half. And obviously to see that ball go in the back of the net, it wasn't a let off because it was offside, but it was it was a thing of things to come, I think. Mm. And also, Holly, what do you make of the goal, um, the opening goal after 15 minutes? Of course, Ivan Tony ran through. Um, your doggy got caught in possession. Vicario made a save, and then Mope uh, hit in the rebound. It deflected off uh, Romero. What did you make of the overall uh, build-up play from Brentford? And of course, your doggy caught in possession. It, it seemed to be a very different your doggy to what we've seen so far this season. Yeah, I think even in the in the City game as well, he just seemed a little bit off it. But then the trouble is when you set a standard so high for yourself, when you have little blips like this, it's more noticeable. And I think, sadly, that's what's happening at the moment. Obviously, it was frustrating because it was a mistake by us, one that we could have clearly avoided. Maybe there was a lack of communication between the doggy. And I think he was looking to find matters um, in the middle that maybe if there was a little bit more com communication, that might not have happened. Um, but then, obviously, Brentford have seemed to work on this thing of trying to pounce on us when we make those little mistakes because we do like to pass the ball around. And they obviously did their homework um, and it, it worked for them. Um, obviously, it was frustrating that, obviously, the goal was saved and then taps back in. Um, a lot of people said about Vicaro, whether at times whether he does need to, to pat it out the way he does. But I think, again, going back to the whole thing about, I think he does a lot more good things than he does bad, kind of like what Craig said about Decky. So for me, I don't, I, I don't think it was unavoidable, but I think when it gets to that point when the keeper's making a save and then it's rebounded in, there's not a lot more you could have kind of done. Mm. Ollie, I want to stay with you because I want to talk a little bit about Timo Werner. Um, after 21 minutes, he, he, he forced a great save from the goalkeeper, tipping it around the post. It was our only shot on target in the first half, I might add. And just moments later from that following corner, corner flicked on, Werner headed wide. What were you thinking at that point? Because Timo Werner has been heavily criticised by a lot of fans. Tottenham fans, Premier League fans, Chelsea fans, RB Leipzig, German fans about the amount of misses. Are, are Tottenham and, and is and Postacoglu going to get the best out of the German international this season? I hope so, but I was kind of dreading it when that went wide from that corner because I was like, oh my word, it's, it's not gone a little bit wide, it's gone quite a lot wide and there wasn't a lot of pressure on him either. Um, but I don't know, maybe he's one of these players that thinks that when he doesn't have a lot of time, it just comes off. I mean, we have already seen him have a couple of assists already uh, with his time here and I think... For me, whether we don't get the best out of him or we do, I, don't, I think it's a win-win for us because technically he can, we don't have to keep him, if that makes a sense. If we can get something from him, great. But I think at the moment where he's getting these assists, OK, it might not be goals, but he's contributing to the overall team performance. So I'll take it. But yeah, like I said, tonight I think it was great and, and I need that can continue. Kiem mm. Yehoibier has just posted a picture on Instagram uh, with the emoji of a dartboard and said, 180. I think that that will shut <laughs> Neil Mope up uh, somewhat. Oh, Darren, let's come to you. Um, after 25 minutes, I tell you what, everyone in the stadium was off their seat. Everyone, including me, thought it was in. Richarlison, what a shot. It must have been inches wide. Yeah. Um, incredible shot. What, what did you make of Richarlison this evening? Uh, yeah, I mean... <laughs> He had a quiet game, really, apart from that in the first half. And again, he stepped up in the second half. So um, I, he, I, I, he didn't really do a lot in the first half. That shot was unbelievable, by the way. Um, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I thought it was in. Um, going back to um, uh, Werner's header, I thought that was in. I thought there's no way he's missed that. I, and I, I think I got off my seat and stared at the, the screen. I couldn't believe that. I thought that was a, that was a plum goal. Um, but yeah. Um, Richarlison, he was, he was, he, again, he, he got his goal, uh, seven goals in seven games. Um, and, and he's doing something. He, he, he always fight. His goals seem to be like sort of poacher's goal. It's, it's a rebound or he scores a lot of headers. Um, but 
yeah, that was a fantastic shot. Um, and I just, I, you know, long may he, he keep on getting the headers and getting, you know, sort of half chances going in because, you know, seven out of seven, that's a fantastic return. I'm going to show you guys here on my phone. Um, there's actually a post from James Madison. He's actually posted a picture of Neil Mopay with his celebration, <laughs> then followed by a picture of himself and then Richarlison with the picture of the scoreline, 3-2. Love it. Oh, I love him. Absolutely love it. Um, Craig, let's come to you. In the 37th minute, Brentford had a chance from a corner, went just wide. Um, shortly after that, a brilliant block from Oliver Skip. Um, just wanted to ask you your opinion on Skip going off at half-time. I think it was purely tactical, to be honest. Um, he obviously wanted to play kind of with two number 10s in Kulisewski and Madison, pretty much. And then Hoybier sitting in there, he obviously thought that Hoybier was going to be the, the better CDM um, to deal with that on his own. And he, and he did. So you have to say it was it was a really good tactical decision by Ange. Um, I don't think Skip was having the worst game I've seen him play, by the way. But I just think horses for courses and that. And I think he, he just felt um, Hoybier would be the better fit in there under that system. And it was proved right. Mm. Craig, it's probably got to be said that um, Thomas Frank, um, he set up his side to frustrate Tottenham. Because I tell you what, mm -hmm. half time, there are a lot of frustrated Spurs fans. Because Brentford... Uh, they frustrated the crowd. They slowed the game down. Um, they knew exactly what they were doing when they were one nil up. What, what were you? What were you thinking at half time? Exactly that. That word frustration. Um, frustrated that we couldn't break them down. I, I, I don't like to see teams play play that way. Um, it's not exactly uh, pure football, is it? But obviously they came here with a game plan, and that's that's what Thomas Frank wanted them to do. Exactly that. Frustrate. Um, delay, wind up, and there was a lot of it going on, and we were falling into that trap in the first half. And I thought that was just going to continue in the second, and, and thank God it didn't. We kind of woke up, changed the formation, as I say, and, and it worked for us. But that first half was 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 pretty dire. We all look, we always struggle. We've seen a struggle before. Uh, teams um, who play the low block, and that, and Brentford were playing exactly that and trying to hit us on the counter. Um, it, it was just really frustrating um, trying to break break them down and sitting almost with five at the back. Um, it's always going to be difficult, but it was the way we were going about it. Like Holly said, that header from Werner, I've probably not seen a header miss that badly uh, wide from that far out. Uh, very few times of me watching football all the years, but um, look, he's not known for a header of the ball, but I thought he could have done a bit better there. Um, Richarlison's shot was probably about one of the only things he did in in that first half. But as you said, I honestly thought he'd gone in. I thought I saw the ball go past the post. I thought, oh, it's just missed. And then because it hit the back stanchion and came back and rippled the net, I thought, oh god, no, it has gone in. And it was like a mixture of emotions. And then you see it just rolling behind the goal. Um, very Sonny esque, I thought that was. That was the sort of bending shot you see Sonny do. Um, but yeah, uh, very unlucky. Very unlucky. That would have been contender for goal of the month, surely, if that had gone in. But um, mm. I'm just so glad we, we woke up in the second half because that, that could have been... Um, Brentford probably winning at half-time, thinking, yeah, we've got this in the bag. We've got them rattled. We've got them rattled. And um, total change in the second half. Mm. And Foster Coglu in his press conference just been talking about Timo Werner and said, I thought he was great. First half, we probably didn't support him enough in that left channel. He was a little bit isolated. Second half, we got the better service to him. He's a quality player. I think he's proven at this level and he will get stronger and fitter uh, and will understand our game a little bit better. Holly, is it a surprise to you if I give you this stat? Tottenham, ha Tottenham had 73% possession in that first half. We only had one shot on target. It doesn't because this is like the for me the last couple of weeks it's always been the same kind of narrative. We get the ball, we try and walk it into the back of the net. It doesn't work, so we'll come back out, try the other way a bit. We, it's just not enough movement um, for me. And again, like we all say, we woke up second half. Um, but no, I'm not. I'm not surprised that we went into the, the obviously came out into the uh, changing room one nil down with that amount of possession because it's just. 
the way these things kind of go at the moment. Um, it's almost like we need Ange's wisdom um, to shoot a rocket out their butt sometimes, and then it actually um, comes alive because we know they can all do it. It just I don't know. I don't know what it is at the moment that seems to be this kind of mentality of let's try and keep all the ball, walk it into the back of the net, and then be happy days. Um, it doesn't really quite work like that. So. I know we've spoken about obviously Richardson not doing enough, not doing a lot, a lot in the first half. It was actually quite nice for him to just have the ball and shoot because there's not a lot of players that tend to do that um, at the moment. So, yeah, um, I wasn't surprised. Why? why, Holly? Why? <laughs> I honestly don't know. I, I don't know if it's this lack of confidence. I know we've got a lot of confidence players in our squad, and they don't know whether it's the right time to pull the trigger. Um, but yeah, it, it is very bizarre. But I don't know. Maybe when Sonny comes back into the team, we'll be able to have that again, where they just shoot from wherever and try and create something and I know someone said in the chat as well uh, about Pedro Porro but he's another one that tends to have a shot and I think there was one with Ben Tenkur as well as well where he decided to have a, a go at it and it just kind of blocked and there's times these players can do it they just don't seem to be doing it and I don't know why Darren let's come to you um, of course at half time Skip and Ben Tenkur went off Hoybier and Johnson came on um, I just want to get your thoughts on what you thought that uh, Ange Postacoglu said to the players at half time and were you surprised by him making two changes after 45 minutes? Well, it's obviously seeing the fact that, <clears throat> like you say, we had 70 percent possession and um, one shot on goal. So, um, yeah, so we got Hoiberg in to um, shore up the uh, the midfield and to do the, the dirty work, as Craig um, was alluding to. And he got Johnson to give us some whip. Um, and obviously told, us, told them, put a rocket up there, bums. Um, and... Uh, I don't think I've ever said that word before, um, and um, and told them to to, to 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 get an early goal and said, "Listen, if you score one straight away, you'll score another." Um, I, going back to just the first half performance, just very briefly, Chris. Um, if you've got someone like Timo Werner, and they said today that he can run a hundred meters like in eleven point one seconds, he's rapid. Why don't you get the ball to him and tell him to run down the left wing and beat a man? You know, like come in deeper, and and use his pace like, like as a conventional winger. He seems to be quite um, high up the pitch. Um, crosses that didn't really work. Um, I'm hoping that he uses him as a conventional winger and, and just and uses that pace. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are on 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 that really. Well. I must say, Darren, in that first half, I was saying to the guy next to me that very rarely um, do you see um, Timo Werner trying to take a man on uh, mm. while she's been in the Spurs shirt. And I think that that will come under Ange Postecoglou. I think that he just needs the confidence to do that. Um, but, you know, he got an assist at Man United. He got an assist this evening. I think he done, mm. I thought he'd done very, very well, actually, yeah. this evening. And uh, I think there's so much more to come from him. Um, yeah, I, th I, think, I think we will get improvement from him, certainly. Um, Craig, let's come to you because Pastor Coglu has just been talking about Brennan Johnson and said, um, I think it probably did Brennan Johnson a little bit of good uh, being on the sub bench this evening um, because he's played a lot for us recently. He, he could have sat and watched the game a little bit, maybe get a little bit of a different perspective. He was good when he came on, uh, good that he got his goal. Pierre Mihoybier helped us as well at the start of the second half, getting a foothold in the game. Now, in the 48th minute, of course, we got our equaliser through Destiny Udoggi just a minute later. Johnson put us 2-1 up and then seven minutes later we were 3-1 up an incredible start to the second half hmm. yeah and these things you love to see isn't it you know putting right what went wrong in the first half and Brennan Johnson was interviewed after the game and he said um, they asked him about his goal and he said that's exactly what the manager wants of his wingers to get in at the far post and so if you look, if you watch Werner's cross, he didn't look up at all. He put it into an area, he knew where he was on the pitch. He put it in the area where he knew somebody should be. And Brennan Johnson was right there to just, just knock it in the net. Mm. Um, I thought Werner, actually, Chris, did, did take on quite, quite a few times in that second half. He did run at people. And I don't care who you are, unless you're Carl Walker, who's, who's probably one of the fastest players I've ever seen. They're going to be scared as hell about Werner running at you because he's going to beat it for pace. He lost the ball tonight and chased back, and the geezer had three or four yards on him, and he'd made I, it up I, within I 20 the, yards. I did say the first half, Craig, and I must say, I reckon that Ange Postacoglu said exactly that. Go and take your yeah. man, because I think it was pretty obvious. 
hundred percent, yeah. And and he's 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 been doing it. Um, I think you're right. You know, the last last two games, the first game he played was it the Manchester United game was his debut. I think it was, wasn't it? And he he was very timid, uh, took, taking the easy pass, almost turning back inside. But tonight you could see him. He was going at people and using that pace. And if we can get him doing that building his confidence up and just crossing the ball. We know he's not the best finisher in the world, but if he's putting balls on a plate for other people to finish like he did with Johnson tonight, then that is worth its weight in gold. I'm sorry, as a winger, that, that's one of your priorities is sit, setting up goals. Yeah, you're going to get, you know, if you're there all season, perhaps if you get 10 from a winger, that's going pretty well. But if Werner does that every game, we're going to score from them as long as the people are in the right position. Yeah, I think very much uh, that Ange is not worried about how many goals he scores. If he can create goals uh, for the team, of course, that, that, that is a huge bonus. Um, Ange Postacoglu has just spoken about this new doggy's mistake. He's defended him and said uh, mistakes will happen. Uh, he's a young man learning the game. He worked hard. He was instrumental in that first goal, driving through, and obviously he scored. Let's talk about his goal, Holly, after 48 minutes, because it was a fantastic start to that second half. Um, what did you make of the goal? I mean, he just went with it, didn't he? Um, we well, all know that he's rapid and he likes to take the ball. Um, and obviously, he pretty much created that goal for himself. I think he ran, didn't he? And then he did he lay it off to Werner and then Werner came, gave it back to him and then passed it in. You can tell it's quite late for me. I'm trying to remember what's happened. Um, but yeah, no, I think for me, obviously, to come back, obviously, after making that mistake first half and then come back second half to get the, the goal, to get us back level again, I think is a true testament to how much hard work he puts in. And regardless, he is always running. And, and I think, Again, because he set that bar so high this season with him coming in, we all kind of forget how young he really is. And the fact that learning mistakes is only going to make him even better. Um, so, yeah, for him to be able to have the, the ability to go and get that first goal was, was incredible from him. That's an interesting point, Holly. Do you think that sometimes fans put perhaps too much pressure on a lot of these players, particularly the younger ones? I think so, but I think that's just how frustrated as fans we've been for the last couple of years. We want everything to click into place now. We've got a great manager. We've got all these young um, talents coming through the ranks in terms of our youth side and the new players we've brought in with like a dogie. And we kind of sit back and actually realise this is going to be a bit more of a process rather than bang, it's here already, nice and fully finished. Um, so, yeah, I think we are a little bit harsh on, on players at times. But again, I, I think that is our passion as well. We want the club to do well and so do the players. We just sometimes forget that they are human as well, if that makes sense. Darren, one player that has been uh, or has received um, quite a lot of criticism, particularly from Spurs fans in recent times, is Brennan Johnson. What did you make of his performance um, in the second 45 minutes? Of course, he got our second goal. Uh, but what did you make of his overall performance? Yeah, it was a bit better tonight. I mean, you know, he's young and he's got a lot to learn, like you've said. Um, I'm pleased he got a goal because that will give him um, a lot of confidence. And at the end, when he was interviewed, he was laughing and, you know, he was saying it's uh, it's never dull playing at Tottenham. You know, it's always fun. So hopefully, as, as Holly's just said... Um, He'll just grow and grow and grow. I don't think he was uh, set the world alight tonight, but he got a goal. He was there. I think it was his first touch of the game, if I'm not mistaken. So, um, who are you smirking at? Your notes are on fire this evening. Yeah, thank <laughs> you. Well, you know, I'm just, you know, I just say what I see. Um, see what you see. It's good. It's not right. There's, there's, a, there's, there's a cultural reference for you. Hasn't he been dead 15 that, years? That, that's, that's one thing. You bring Darren Altman on the show, you get, you get 20 other celebrities. Sorry. Um, yeah, like I said, he didn't, uh, for me, he didn't set the world alight, but he got a goal and hopefully that'll give him confidence. And he must be knackered, um, you know, um, really. And hopefully, hopefully he'll, he'll kick on after tonight and that'll give him a lot of confidence. But um, yeah, I'm pleased he scored. I'm pleased he scored. And do you know what? We weren't brilliant tonight, um, but we got three different players scoring three different goals, and I think that speaks volumes. Craig, let's come to you on Richarlison. Of course, Richarlison got Tottenham's third goal of the night. Um, another player who's had a lot of criticism this season from Spurs fans, and particularly last season. Um, that is now seven in seven for him. What do you mm. make of his performance? Yeah, it's funny because, I, you know, I've been critical of Richarlison uh, while trying to stay positive about him, but you can't deny those figures and your centre-forward is there to score your goals. Um, that's, it's as simple as that, in my opinion. 
yeah, you, there are other parts to the game, but if he's scoring his goals, he's doing his job. That's what Alan Shearer has always said. You know, he wants to send a forward to your number nine to be a number nine. Um, can't argue with that. He was in the right place at the right time. <laughs> Did his best to miss it. He, he had the whole goal away, man, and he hit it straight at the player, and it just went through his legs. But um, look, when luck's on your side, it, it, it goes in. And um, really pleased for his chance. And I don't dislike him at all. I just think, I, I just want to see more from him. I personally would like us to have gone out and got a centre forward. Um, but they obviously have faith in Valise. Um, he's on the grass training again. So as long as there's somebody to push him, um, I think we can address that in the summer. It's like somebody said, I think there's 16 games left now, is there? We should be able to see for at the end of the season. And in my opinion, if we don't have anybody across the line tomorrow, as long as big players, most players stay fit, then we should be all right, I think, till the end of the season. Um, look, we never do anything the easy way as Tottenham fans. It would be boring if we was winning 3-4-0 every week and not being entertained, wouldn't it? So, no, it wouldn't. You know, it wouldn't. No. I'm just, trying, I'm just trying to make myself feel better, to be honest with you. Um, but yeah, it's, um, it's good to see Richarlison notching because it's all about confidence being a centre-forward. And while he's scoring seven in seven, you can't argue with those figures. Oli, let's come to you. After 59 minutes, Pedro Poro had a shot over the bar. Uh, what have you made of Pedro Poro this season? Because he seems to be one of our standout players, seems to be one of the leaders in the team right now. I mean, for me, it's whenever he does something really good and you see him like absolutely scream uh, into the stands. I think it's that kind of passion that we all want to see as fans and he's definitely got a lot of it. But he's got a lot of talent as well. Like we've mentioned briefly tonight, the fact that he's obviously scored goals as well when we want him to just shoot. Um, he's got a great uh, delivery into the box. I think sometimes he can be a little bit wary in his defending kind of side, but that's why we've got the likes of Roadrunner, uh, Mickey van der Ven and, and the Romero at the back to be able to sweep up things that don't quite go this way. But I think, Pedro Poro has really come on leaps and bounds um, I think this season and, and like we keep saying about all the players they can only grow uh, under Ange Darren in the 63rd minute uh, Brentford had a great chance they put it wide and just a minute later um, Ivan Tony seemed to do all the hard work but he dragged it wide were you worried at that point we were 3-1 up I know obviously we conceded another goal after um, but defensively what do you think of Tottenham defensively this season uh, I'm pleased that we've got Romero and um, Van der Ven back together. You know, um, I think they are, they're forming um, a wonderful partnership. They're very embryonic um, as a, a centre-back pairing. Um, they're not quite... Um, oh, uh, I can see their bloody faces. Our old... Uh, uh, played together for years. Jesus Christ. Tongan and Elderbyron. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. They're not quite up to that. Esme, think you were talking about Eric Dyer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry, they were straight out my head. Then. Yeah, they're not quite up to that level. But I mean, if they carry on playing together and, you know, it can only get better and better and better. Um, yeah, I mean, it's typical Spurs, isn't it? You know, it, it's squeaky bun time. And um, uh, we did our best to sort of run the clock down, uh, you know, in the last... <laughs> in the last 10 minutes, but they were still, you know, we were still back backs to the wall. And yeah, when you see Ivan Tony drag a shot wide, God almighty, you know, it's nervy. We were hanging on and um, we don't do things easily. You know, we don't sort of sail to victories. You know, we it, it, it's always that last five, 10 minutes that, you know, we end up uh, soiling ourselves. <laughs> Craig, let's come to you. In the 67th minute, of course, Brentford did get their second goal. Ivan Tony got it. Um, what did you make of that goal? It, do you know what? I mean, obviously, Udogi's fault completely, but it, uh, <laughs> he was so he, he he was obviously just just wasn't aware that Tony was there. I think he must have took a knock and he was just making his way back and he basically passed him the ball, didn't he? Mm. I've got a little tiny bit of sympathy for him because he probably just wasn't expecting it and he didn't really look up. Um, but look, you're a professional, you, you should have noticed that. And you, you know, look, he made a mistake. And he, as soon as he did, he put his hands up and said, Look, I didn't see him, I didn't see him. Um, it, it, it's a tough one to take because it was funny. I'm, I'm sure, like everybody else, was when it we was like, Where the, did he come from? You know, <laughs> it's like, where, where, where did he come from? Yeah. You know, um, it was just one of those freak moments, really. And it, 
you know, lucky it didn't cost us the game really, wouldn't it? And because I think if that had been two two, it would have been, um, you know, it would have been a different game. But um, it was a great finish by Tony. I have to say, very cool. Um, mm. I think personally, I don't, I don't, I, I mean, two minds about Tony. Would I want us to go for a player like him in the summer? I That's think exactly he's a good player. Ask. I think he's a good player. You know, having seen him tonight, um, I think he would work well in this Ange team. He's the nearest thing to an old style sort of centre forward, you know, big, strong, holds the ball up well, um, can finish as well, of course. So I would imagine there'll be a massive premium on the price of him. I think you're looking 60 plus perhaps. I don't know how long's left on his contract. Um, but are Spurs, would Spurs want to spend that money? Um, I don't know. don't know the answer to that. But I personally, I'm glad we didn't go for Dominic Solanke in this window. I think he's a, uh, I've always rated him. I think he's a pretty good player, but I think he's just hit a bit of a purple patch at the moment. I don't think he's going to maintain that for the rest of the season. I think there are better centre forwards out there if that's what Ange wants. He did a, um, he did a good interview with um, Stephen Bartlett a little while ago on death of, um, on uh, uh, the, the CEO podcast. And it was a really good interview actually. And he said he's been absolutely working his nuts off, you know, while he hasn't been um, playing in the first team. He's been really, really working hard, keeping his fitness up. Um, he's an Arsenal fan, actually, uh, as a boy. Is, which is, is he? Yeah, yeah. But, um, uh, you know, he to um, to come out of his uh, um, uh, uh, not sabbatical, to come out of his... Um, uh, Ban. Thank you. Yeah. Um, then uh, and play like he has done, sort of hit the ground. Thank you, Chris. It's, it's late for me. I should be well, but my mum knew I was up this late. She'd kill me. To come out of his bed <laughs> and, and play as, as he has done, you know, just shows you the work he's been putting in. Yeah, absolutely. He didn't really celebrate his goal, to be honest. It was, no. That was, was another strange thing. But yeah. Polly, would you bet on Tottenham game for Ivan Tony in the summer? Oh, very good. <laughs> see what you did there. I, I can see, uh, I can see his. I can see the potential on how he'd work under Ange. I don't know if I like his kind of demeanour, if that's the way to put it. Uh, I wouldn't say his attitude, because like you've all kind of said, he's he's worked really hard since while he's had his ban. Mm. But I don't know if he'll come in and kind of tip the apple, apple cart sort of thing, if that's the right way to word it. Um, so I'm not sure. It'd be nice to obviously get another striker in. But again, it's, it's the money kind of thing. We spent, what was it, 60 on Richarlison. Are we really going to go out again? And um, get 60 on here. I, I don't know. It's a difficult one. Polly, let's stay with you because uh, Dragusin um, came on for Madison in the 88th minute. Donnelly came on uh, for Werner in the 92nd minute. Just wanted to ask you a little bit about both of them. Um, do you think that Jamie Donnelly will get many chances from now until the end of the season with all of the players coming back from international duty and injury, suspension, etc.? Um, and with Dragusin, do you think that he will get much game time from now until the end of the season when Mickey van der Ven and Christian Romero seem so good? It's a difficult one, isn't it? Because like we said, we've always said in the past we don't have enough options and now we've got the opposite kind of thing. But it's a great position to be in and that's why Ange is the one that's going to have the headache. Um, I think in terms of Donnelly, I think we will potentially see more of him. I mean, it's gutting that obviously we uh, went out of both cups because maybe we would have seen more of him prior um, um, tonight. Um, I, again, it's going to be difficult, like you said, to see if we can filter him in. But I think he'll get a few minutes here and there to build his confidence um, up, obviously, and get some minutes under his belt. Even if it's a game like tonight, again, he was chucked in. I think, what was it? He he lost the ball, didn't he? And then he dragged the player back because he's probably thinking, I'm not letting them not score when I've come on for my first appearance. Um, so, yeah, I think we'll see a bit more of him again. It'll probably be like extra time sort of things. Um, again, with Dragosine, uh, I love him, man. And it's a great another option to have in case we need to give Mickey van der Ven some minutes of rest because we can't live without him. I don't want to see that much period of time without him again. Um, so even if we use him for a little bit of rotation, that'd be quite nice. But yeah, there's lots of players coming back. So it's going to be a massive, massive headache for Ange. Darren, talking about players coming back, of course, Papa Matasar is returning to Tottenham. Uh, apparently he came back today. He will be available for Saturday. Uh, do you think he's going to go straight back into the team in the starting 11 on Saturday? Absolutely. Hope so. Yeah. Well, if it's a choice between Hoiberg, Skip and Pap and Saar, then obviously, yeah, it goes without saying. He's been unbelievable and I think we've missed him. Um, I think today we missed him. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and as Holly said, the um, 
the options now, you know, Basuma, Saar, Dragusin, um, uh, it, it bodes it bodes really really well and and you, you you know as a manager you want these headaches you know you want you know the um the options so um absolutely and i think he's been um he's been a fantastic uh signing and a really really good player for us this season and um you know i think we missed him tonight i really think we missed him i mean skip's perfunctory you know he, he's fine he made a couple of good challenges he tracked back well tonight um, did his defensive duties, but um, he's sort of um, perfunctory. Um, and as Craig said, you know, Hoiberg comes in, you know, he, he'll, he'll he'll make the tackles, he'll get a yellow card. Um, but again, perfunctory. But Basuma and and uh, Saar, there for me, and, uh, and Bentoncourt, who we haven't spoke about tonight, really, but I thought he played well in the first half. I thought, again, some of his passing and some of his turns to, to beat players, he showed what a, what a fantastic touch he is and what a good player he, he is. So in terms of um, Bentoncourt, Skip, so excuse me, Bentoncourt, Scott, Saar and Basuma, fantastic midfield options there. Craig, would you expect Saar to walk straight into the team on Saturday? Um, I would imagine he probably will. Um, it does seem uh, like Angie's going to have a decision to make. Um, you know, you would imagine Madison will start again. Benton Kerr will probably start. Um, and then it's a straight choice, really, between Saar and Hoybier. Um, It does seem a bit unfair, if you like, to drop Hoybier after his performance in the second half and help change the game. But um, I think Hoybier has performed better when he's come on as a sub later in games, to be honest. And just that sure, calming influence that he's and professionalism that he's shown, like we've said said uh, said earlier. Um, I, I just think he is a good good person to bring on later in the game. So um, it wouldn't surprise me at all to see Sar come in there. What Ange does and what you'd think is our strongest midfield once Bissouma's back is is a, that is a difficult choice, isn't it? Because you've basically got three from four there. Um, but look, hey, they they're good problems to have. Pep has those problems every week, and he seems to to, to manage it. So uh, I'd rather they're, they're all. It's um, it's a good dilemma, isn't it, for him? I'm sure that's how he, he feels about it. Because mm. Dragushin is um, or Dragushin is um, he's probably jumping at the bit to get in, and he got he got five ten minutes tonight um, and helped keep him out of the end there. So I didn't realise how big he was. He's an absolute unit, isn't he, yeah. Dragushin? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd like, I, I just wonder whether he's going to come in for either Romero or, or Van der Ven at the weekend, just give one of them a break. But um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's, um, it's going to be, it's going to be a tough game. They're all tough games, isn't they? At the moment, anyway. <laughs> Polly, let's come to you. What would be a successful season for you? Because Ange, after the Manchester City game, said that, you know, he hopes that people have perspective. Now, after 10 games we were unbeaten, sitting top of the league, a lot of people were getting very excited. Of course, uh, we're going for a major rebuild, still are. Of course, our record goal scorer, Harry Kane, left in the summer. Uh, we know that there is a lot of improvement still to be had in this squad, in this team. We know that Andrew's is still trying to build, and, and he's spoken out many times about wanting to sign more players in the summer. What would be a successful season for you, particularly after going out of the FA Cup and the League Cup so early? It's really difficult. I think at the start of the season when we saw Harry leave and and the fact we got um, Ange in, I was kind of thinking anything six and above for me is fine. And then obviously the, the run started really early on and I, was, I wasn't getting too ahead of myself, but I was like, oh, OK, something's happening here. And then I thought, right, as long as we get a trophy this season, I'll be happy. And then obviously they both crashed out. So now for me, the fact that we're still competing at the top, obviously we've gone back into the top four this evening, it would be amazing to sit here at the end of the season and be like, we're back in Europe, to think of everything that's gone on. So for me, this is going to sound really controversial now, I say fifth and above, I think, to, to sit here and see the major chaos that's happened in the summer, to bring a new manager in, to see all this swapping and changing, to have our new style back. I'm just enjoying watching football now. And before it was like, I want a trophy because it's been so long. I still want a trophy, but I'm actually enjoying myself now, which once you've had that taken away from you and then you get it mm. back again, you actually realise how 
much you've missed that. So I think fifth and above for me, but it'd be amazing to get into Europe. Mm. Holly, of course, it is very difficult to get a Champions League spot, but when clubs do get a Champions League spot, of course, they need those extra players, need that depth to cope with European football, particularly Champions League. How confident are you that Spurs are going to have another fantastic window in the summer like we did last summer? The fact that we've been proactive, I think, in January, I know we can still sit here and say that we won another strike and we all say our January is quite hard, but I think we've done good business that's actually financially okay but I can also see that there's actually sense in it obviously Werner we, he's come in he's got some assists and we don't have to keep him if he doesn't come on to what we want him to be so the fact that we've been so proactive and obviously getting Madison in the summer for me it gives me hope that we can get it over the line in in the summer coming so yeah I think we can and the fact if we do get Champions League hopefully that will give a bit more of incentive to go out and actually get who Ange wants in this system as well. Darren, if you were to be honest with me, what were your expectations before a ball was kicked this season under Ange Postecoglou when he was appointed? And what do you expect now? What would you be happy with now? God, I mean, I remember when, when I did my first um, Spurs show after we signed um, or we got Ange and I said, I'm not a fan of Scottish football. I said, I think, you know, Rangers and Celtic are average at best in a poor league. And um, I, I didn't know anything about Ange. And then I saw the documentary. It's a really good documentary on YouTube, which I urge everyone to watch when he was at Celtic. Um, and, um, you know, and his whole philosophy. And I thought, wow, this guy's got something about him. And then he came in. Um, I would have thought, sixth seventh you know I, I didn't really know anything about him but now well as Charles has just said anything is possible the only thing is is that you know the, the the teams above us you know are all absolutely firing at the moment including um you know who they that should, shouldn't be mentioned you know they're they're just winning loads so yeah but, but Darren they they're meant to be in a title race we're three points away from them are we in a title race <sighs> We have got, I think we're playing, we've got the next four out of five games at home and we are playing, hold on one second, we've got Everton, um, Brighton, Wolves and Palace. So, in theory, they are there for the taking. They are there for the taking. If we can win four of those games, wow. You know, let's let's have a chat, you know, after after four or five games, Chris. Uh, but you know, to trot out all the all the cliches, you know, no such thing as an easy game in the Premier League, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, da 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 da. So um, you know, you can't get carried away. It would be lovely to think with four out of five games at home and playing what you know on paper are the worst teams in the league. They're there for the taking, and with players coming back into the fold, don't forget Sonny. You know, he is absolutely missed. Who knows? Who knows? Who we knows? we was a we was a minute a minute away from getting our captain back last night, and they equalised, didn't they? Ninety yeah. plus ten or eleven, um, yeah. and obviously went on to win. So yeah, yeah, got him, got him for Spurs, but good for some. Yeah, yeah. Craig, when everyone is fit and available, how good is this squad? What is this? What what can this squad achieve this season? I, I genuinely think. Do you know what I went back and watched? Um, last week chris was uh the show we did very late at night the night harry kane went to munich and i, I didn't watch all of it because it was thoroughly depressing um but i watched what i said and where i thought we'd finish now that harry had gone and i think i said 10th obviously we, we were acting very emotionally and off the back of losing the best player the club's ever had certainly the best striker the club's ever had um and we hadn't really seen much of Ange. well we hadn't seen a, a league match at all have we had only seen the friendlies um but, and but looking looking at it now now we've seen what's possible how Ange has improved the players that we a lot of us had written off um with one transfer window under his belt and another one just coming to an end where we have improved the squad, I think if we keep, like I said before, if we keep the big players fit, I think we can easily achieve top four and possibly, dare I say, even higher. I'm not saying we're in a title race. I don't, I mean, mathematically, 
we are there, but I don't think we've got a prayer finishing top of the league. But I do think third is 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 possible. And he, uh, the thing is, you've got to overtake City to get second. So let's be realistic. But I do think third. I think we could overtake the mob up the road easily. Um, that fifth between fifth and sixth is just starting to open up a little gap between um, uh, what is now Villa and West Ham. Um, obviously, West Ham has strengthened, but uh, last time I heard, the odds of the Champions League position going down to fifth was 76%. So they think there's 76% chance of that going down to fifth. So we've just got to hope all the Europe, the English teams stay in European competitions as long as possible, even Arsenal. And even if they got to the final and got pumped 10-0, in the words of Mr. Ali Ross, uh, when he was talking about Rangers, I'd love to see it as long as that position goes down to fifth. And we're in that top five. I think that just gives us a lot more scope than the type of players you can bring in in the summer. Even though Ange doesn't want necessarily superstars, we've bought big big money signings before and look how they've worked out. It hasn't gone particularly well. Mm. But I, there is part of me that craves that that bit of stardust signing, like a Klinsman. That, I remember that how I felt when Klinsman came in, how, how I felt when Bale came back, even though he was kind of in, you know, he was slowing down a bit. Uh, in his or coming to the end of his football career, but I, I think you just want that excitement again. That player that's been there, done it, he's in the prime of his career, and we've actually gone out and bought them, and you know they're just going to be a success. Um, but to get there, I think this squad is capable of getting certainly top five easily. Before I get your thoughts ahead of the Everton game, Holly, I just wanted to ask you um, Brian Hill is currently um, in talks with Brighton, um, although talks are not advanced. <laughs> as yet, um, do you think a deal can be done before the end of the window tomorrow evening? Um, and would you be disappointed if he left on a permanent basis? Or would you be surprised if it was another loan? It's really difficult with him, isn't it? Because we always say, I mean, he's a bit like a beetle, isn't he? The fact that he's got his wishy hair and he, he, he tends to fall over now and again. But I think there is a player in there and it's the most frustrating thing. But we do send put him on loan to, to a Spanish club. And then you're thinking, but what is he actually gaining from that? Um, I mean, if he goes to Brighton, good luck to him. But I feel like he, he could possibly excel under Brighton in the way they kind of play. But again, it's whether he can actually um, strengthen himself up. Because as we all know, we keep saying he, he's easily pushed off the ball. I'm, I'm not too sure where I kind of sit with him. I think even if we had him as an option um, in the squad, again, we've, got, we've spoken about all these players that are in front of players would he just be in, in the squad and not actually featuring in games again? So I'm, I'm not sure. It, it's difficult. I think it's going to be too quick of a turnaround to get things done by tomorrow. But I think it's definitely potentially something for the summer if Ange is looking to bring more players in. We've got to offload some players too. Now, of course, Tottenham's next Premier League game takes place on Saturday, 12.30 kickoff against Everton at Goodison. Uh, at Goodison. Um, I've just got a short preview here from James Beatty, of course, former Everton striker. He played for them between 2005 and 2007. We'll just get James's thoughts ahead of this game and then I'll get your score predictions and your thoughts ahead of this Premier League clash. Hi, Chris and everybody at the Spurs Chat podcast. James Beatty here and my thoughts on the Everton Spurs game this Saturday. Everton sort of started the season off um, pretty poorly and everybody thought they were going to be cannon fodder, um, relegation relegation candidates, um, until they got the 10-point deduction, which <clears throat> seemed to galvanise the the team and the club. Uh, and they went on a, a really good run, winning four games on the bounce. Um, but since then, I think they've sort of reverted to type and getting in intermittent results. Um, but standout players for Everton are Abdullah Decore in the midfield. Whenever he seems to play well, the, the, you know, the, seem, the team seems to play well. Uh, Dwight McNeil, another influential player. Uh, and James Tark Tarkowski in the centre of defence um, sort of epitomises the spirit uh, that Everton can display at times. Tottenham, on the other hand, um, with Ange Ball, started off the season really, really well. 
Um, then came into a period in November, which was, was particularly difficult, uh, not winning a game. Um, but since then, started to pick up some, some great results, pretty indifferent. And uh, I think the standout players for Tottenham are Hugh, Hung Min's son. Uh, love the way he plays. Um, always seems to have a smile on his face. Uh, Pedro Porro um, is another is another really good player, uh, and and James Madison, when when he's fit, you know James's his ratings are, are are sort of right up there with the best. Um, so my memories uh, were all at White Hart Lane, um, giving away my age a little bit there, but White Hart Lane used to be my favourite stadium out of all the stadiums that I played at. Um, and I think one of the good memories for me being there would, would not particularly be a good memory for, for some uh, of you, you know, Spurs fans. But it was when Glenn Hoddle had previously left Southampton about, I don't know, six to eight months before. And we came to White Hart Lane and, and we... We won 3-1, I scored two goals uh, and after the game, Glenn uh, got sacked, which I guess is, is football irony. Um, but that was a you know a, a fond memory for me and probably one of the best games I played at, at White Hart Lane. Not the fact that Glenn got sacked, but you know the, the outcome of the game um, was, a, was a nice memory. Uh, I think the score... I think Spurs will win. Um, as I say, I think Everton have reverted to type. They're, they're sort of very up and down. But if Spurs can go there and play the the way that they can, then I, I believe a positive result will be uh, for Spurs. OK, thank you. Ollie, let's come to you first. Of course, Everton are in the Pretty relegation good. zone right now. Of course, they've got their points deduction. Uh, they're 18th, they've won eight, they've drawn four, they've lost 10. They've got a goal difference of minus four. They've got 18 points on the board so far. Um, of course, this is, I know we all say it, but a difficult place to go, Goodison. Although we've had some good results at Everton um, in the Premier League. Your thoughts ahead of this game and what changes do you think Ange Postecoglou will make? Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one, like you said. Um, obviously, with them not playing too well at the minute. Obviously, that, didn't they play Fulham the other day? And it was a nil-nil draw or something, wasn't it? So, um, with that in mind, you kind of think we're going to go there and, and hopefully do the business. Um, obviously, obviously, getting that win tonight is going to put us into good stead. Um, but yeah, like you've kind of said, it's it's not an easy ground to go to. Um, I'd like to see Richie get on the score sheet, um, and I think that'll be one that. He'll obviously like to do. Uh, I don't think he'll celebrate unless he throws a few darts. Um, so that seems to be the running thing at the moment. Um, but yeah, I think in terms of Ange's changes, again, obviously with Saar coming back, we've spoken already about Saar potentially coming into the side. I don't think he'll give him a rest. I think he'll want to play him in, and then we might see Hoiberg come on later on. I think he'll, um, I think he'll put Skip out of this one. Um, I think. But apart from that, I think that's probably my only changes. That I think Ange will make. Score prediction, Holly? Oh, sorry, I forgot about that. The, the crucial bit. Um, I would say I'm going to go 3-1 Tottenham. I think they're going to score a goal. Um, I think that's just the way we are at the minute. Um, but I think we're going to then go on and, and win comfortably 3-1. I agree. I think I'm, we're going to win 3-1 as well. Darren, what are your thoughts? Right, first of all, um, I was going to say 3-1, and I'm not just saying it because Holly said it. That was that was exactly my, my same prediction. Um <clears throat> Sydney Moo knows what he's talking about. She's not, she knows it could be a girl, Sydney, you know. Um, so the good news is is that they're third from bottom on 18 points, and they've lot they've won one out of their last six games, so they're not on good form whatsoever. They're rubbish. But you stole my line. You have got notes this evening. You know, just call me um just call me, you know, Jamie Carragher. You know, I don't know, you know. You'll be, getting the, you'll be getting the call from Sky soon. Oh, mate, you got that sewn up. You're talking about pace. Um, so <laughs> there's one for you. I saw that's all I can do with him. Do you, Jamie Carragher? You're talking about pace. Um, so um, so that's uh, they won one in their last six, but the bad news is is that they're on 18 points 
and Luton are on 19, Nottingham Forest on 20, Brentford are 22, Crystal Palace 24. So basically, they've got everything to play for. They're not languishing third for bottom. So, you know, they've got everything to play for. Win a couple of games and they're well out of the relegation zone. Um, and, you know, Goodison is a tough place to go. But having said that, I stick to my um, guns and I reckon 3-1 Spurs. And, and finally, just to say, it's a really good thing that we had three goal scorers tonight um, and we played well. We showed that fighting spirit and hopefully the momentum will just carry us forward into that game. Absolutely. And uh, Craig? Yeah, oh, score prediction. I, I had in my head, I had, I had three one in my head, but I can't say that because you've all said it. So I'm going to say, Ooh. I'm going to say two nil Tottenham. I, I thought mm. I've got a good feeling about this. I think, I think, um, wouldn't say we're going to steamroller them because it is that old cliche. It's a tough place to go. Um, it's not if you get an early goal um, because the crowd will get <laughs> will get on the twos back. Um, that place. Um, can be, you know, that you, if you can shut the fans up, it, it, it's, it's like any ground. Get an early goal, and they shut up. Mm. It, you know, you only got here at our ground tonight. Obviously, we got back into it in the second half. Um, I think, um, I think we're just going to have too much for them. And I'm going to go for Werner to get his notch. I'm going to get, get say Timo Werner is going to score a goal, and Saar I think will come back straight back in. I agree with that. Um, I just think we're going to have too much for them. And I, no, it's an important game because early game Saturday is bloody horrible if you lose because you've got to watch the rest of the weekend and then pray other teams that are around you lose as well. Mm. We can get off to that winning start, which will level on points with Arsenal, I think. Um, obviously, I, I don't. Th I think their goal difference is better than ours, so I don't think we can go above them unless it's a ridiculous 10-0 win or something like that. Um, but look, we, we put the pressure on then. You know, uh, we win our game. You can sit back and relax and watch everybody else. So, so yeah, let's hope for another Tottenham win. Three games in a week. Um, that's what I want to see next year. Two or three games in a week. Because I hope him will be in Europe. I hope we're in all cups all the way through. I mean, 41 bloody games in a season. That's only one more of the minimum amount you can play. <laughs> it's not good. It's not good, is it? You know, it, it's, been, it's, been, it's been tough this season. But, you know, it, we needed a reset. And we've certainly got a reset. And um, I think give Ange another big summer window with the promise of Champions League football. And, well, I, th I think um, this squad could be a lot better next season. Well, the security is here now. The stadium is now closing. So, Craig, please tell everyone where they can find you on social media and what you're up to. At the okay. Moment. okay, wrap it up very quickly. Um, uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter or X, as it's called, at DM9, that'd be great to, to have another few followers. Usually pick up a few from uh, from these chats. So uh, lovely to be on again. Um, I think I'm back on Friday for the preview show. So I'll see you then. But thanks for having me on, Chris. Thank you, Craig. And Holly, tell everyone about your wonderful channel. And of course, you interviewed the legend Ledley King recently. Tell us all about that. Wow. But quick. Uh, yeah, I will do this very quick. Um, uh, I do a show every Monday called Hotties Hotspurs, not as cool as Chris's, um, but you can come over um, and listen to all the things that we chat about, about the game that's just gone. Uh, I did manage to obviously interview Ledley King at Portsmouth Spurs uh, Legends Night, which was really cool. Um, that's also on there. Um, and again, thank you so much for having me on, Chris. It's actually really nice to be on the other side and not actually host the show. So thank you for having me. You're welcome to host my shows anytime you like. No, Trust this me, is you too are. technical. <laughs> <laughs> Darren, thank you so much for coming back. It's been a pleasure. Where can people find you and what thank you are? Hey, Dar uh, at Darren Altman on Twitter, at Darren Altman underscore VO for voiceover on Instagram. Um, yeah, do my hello, it's Gary Mabbott. Look, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, just up to my normal voiceovers. I'm doing some stand up comedy as well. Um, so you've got to go. I first started supporting Spurs, Chris. <laughs> boy. Um, it was uh, my father who first got... Sorry, you... we're wrapping up. We're wrapping up. Can, can I just say a, uh, a very happy birthday to Spurs fan and steward Stephen. He celebrates his 43rd birthday tomorrow. So happy birthday. Have a great day. Um, Craig, happy birthday. Craig, Darren, Holly, thank you so much for joining me. Thanks for watching, everyone. Thanks for listening. Until the next time, come on, you Spurs. Come on, you Spurs.